you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians to be renewed in your mind. That's right. It's time for a good brainwashing. Your mind is corrupt. It's time to wash away all that filth. You understand? You gotta wash away all that filth. Let's see, give me Romans 3. Give me Romans 3, real quick. It's time to wash away all that old, filthy way of thinking. That old club life, pimp life, hooker, prostitute. It's time to let that go. Get your mind renewed. Read what you got. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 2. What, verse 1, what advantage then have the Jew? What advantage do you have as a so-called black Hispanic Native Indian? What advantage do you have as an Israelite? What advantage do you have? What advantage do you have being an Israelite, knowing that you're Israelite? Read. Or what profit is there of circumcision? And what would it profit you to cut away and stop doing the old you, the old lifestyle? What would that profit you to cut away smoking cigarettes, to cut away turning up in the club? What would it profit you to put the guns down, stop game banging? What would it profit you to stop selling drugs to your brother? Read. Verse two, much, every way. It will profit you much in every way. Read. Chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. It says chiefly, meaning especially or mainly because unto them, the them is the so-called blacks, Hispanic Native Indians, the Israelites, it was given who? Unto them were committed the oracles of God. Because unto you Israelites, you were given the law, statutes, and commandments. That's you was given God's law, statutes, and commandments. God didn't get a law, statutes, and commandments to nobody else. This Bible wasn't designed for no other nation. That's right. And we're going to prove that in the Bible. You have the advantage. It profits you in much in every way because the Bible was given to you Israelites. That's right. God didn't deal with the other nations. Give me that. Book of Psalms. God did not mess with the other nations. In fact, he chose y'all, he chose the Israelites above all, all other nations on the earth. So this Bible, keep, keeping these laws will profit you and benefit you in much every way. You got to stop turning up. Cut away the cigarettes. Cut away the, the weed smoke. Put the guns down. All right? Renew your mind. Read what you got. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. The Most High God said he showed his word the words are written in the Bible, the law. He showed the Bible unto Jacob. Who is Jacob? That's our forefather. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel after he wrestled with the angel. Read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Read again from the top. He showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any other nation. So any other nation that got this Bible in their hand, tell them to cease, put it down, humble down. Put the Bible down, because this is our book. This book belongs to us. That's right. Read it again. He had not dealt so with any nation. You understand? During slavery, our oppressor took this Bible and taught it to us the wrong way. He taught it to us the wrong way. He got us thinking that Christ is a so-called white man. But those are all lies. We're here to tell you the truth. What's the truth? Let's give what the truth is. Let's show the system what the truth is. Let's show the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians what the truth is. Yeah. Listen what the truth is, because our oppressors, they lied to us. We've been lied to far too long. What Christ really looked like? Let's show you what the truth is, first and foremost. Read what you got. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Bring it out. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. What's the truth? Thy law is the truth. Thy what? Thy law is the truth. The laws that's written in this Bible is the truth. The words that's written in this Bible, that's the truth. Bring it out. Now, let me get some out of this Bible and prove that Christ don't look like a white man. Give me revelations. What's the root word of revelation? The root word of revelation is to reveal. That's right. We're about to reveal what, the, what Christ looks like, the truth. Read what you got. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Bring it out. My brother, step forward. I want to challenge you to something real quick. I want to challenge you. Here's the challenge. My question is, what did Christ look like? You thought he was white? You thought he was white, okay. Fair enough, you thought that, right? And I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you why you thought that. You thought Christ was white because of this. You see this? The white man got us on the auction block. The, the so-called white man took this book and painted their own images in it and taught it to us the wrong way. I'm gonna prove that to you. 
first Mega Beast 3, then we're gonna get Revelations. I'm gonna give you a history lesson real quick. Do you know what iconoclasm mean? Bring it out! Iconoclasm. We're gonna show you, according to the Bible, what the other nations did to our book. First and foremost, this Bible is your history book. The Bible is your history book. It belongs to you and no other nation. It belongs to the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, all right? Give me what you got. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 48. It laid open the book of the law. So the other nations laid open the book of the law, meaning they opened up the Bible, the so-called whites, the so-called Spaniards, they opened this Bible up, right? Read. Wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. That's right. Heathen, heathen mean other nations outside of Israel. They opened up the book and they did what? And sought to paint the likeness of their images. They opened up this book and they sought to, they, they sought to paint their images. What's your bow at? What's your bow? You see the, the so-called, the one you thought that was Christ? That man right there is he's an actual real man. That is Caesar Borgia. He was, he was painted by Leonardo da Vinci, who was hired by the Pope, to paint him as Christ. Bring it they up. laid open this book and painted their images in it. But we had to show you, according to the Bible, that that's a lie. Right, Christ ain't white. Right. Your t-shirt is white. You understand? Have you ever seen somebody on the face of the planet with the color of your t-shirt? No. Christ is not a so-called white man. That's right. We're going to show you, according to the Bible, what he really looked like. Bring it out. Read what you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word of revelation means to reveal. Give me that in verse 1. The book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The re we're about to show you the revealing of Jesus the Christ. We're going to show you what Jesus Christ really looked like. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Is his head, is his hairs on his head white like wool? On a white, so-called white man? It is? Is his hair white like wool? Take a look at the sister behind you. She got woolly hair. Look at my hair. I got woolly hair. Does his hair look like that? No. So guess what? That's strike one. Strike one. Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the hairs on his head were white like wool. Read. As white as snow. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. The Bible reveals that Christ's eyes, the white of his eyes was red, like a flame of fire. Why? Because he drank wine. The first miracle he did was turn water into wine. Let's prove that real quick. Genesis chapter 49. Verse 12. Verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Read it again. His eyes shall be red with wine. So Christ, when, when, when we see him, we be revealed, his eyes will be red with wine. You understand? Read, go back to Revelation. Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read. Verse 15, and his feet. And his what? And his feet. And his what? And his feet. Amir, you got to know that during this time, the Messiah walked around with open toe sandals. All right? So, John the Revelator is revealing what his feet look like. Let's see how he paint the picture. Read. And his feet like unto fine bread. John the Revelator said, when I looked at his feet, it looked like fine brass. Who knows what the brass section? What color is the brass section? It's a derivative of brown, right? You know. Right? You can buff it and it make it shine like gold. It's a derivative, a derivative of brown, right? Watch this, read. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. So John the Revelator said, his, when I looked at his feet, it looked like fine brass, as if it was burned in a furnace. So if you take brass that's already a derivative of brown, and you burn that in a furnace, what color is it going to look like? What color? Black! If you burn anything in a furnace, what color is it going to be? When you burn something, what color is it? Black! So John the Revelator said, I looked at his feet, and it was the color of fine brass as if it was burned in a furnace. So Christ's feet was black. If his feet was black, like your feet is black, what color was his arms? What, what color was his face? 
black. Jesus the Christ is a so-called black man. That's right. According right. to the Bible. All right? Now, why do we shoot each other down in these streets? Why do we tend to sell drugs to each other? I'm going to tell you why. Because identity theft. We've been thinking that Christ all this time was a white man. So I sell drugs to that black man right there. I shoot that black man down because he don't look like Christ. Do you understand? We've been thinking that Christ don't look nothing like us. But the whole time, Christ looked just like you and I. He looked just like you and I. Dark skin with woolly hair. Understand that. So let me ask you something. Now that you know that Christ is a so-called black man with woolly hair, and we made his image and likeness, wouldn't that make you want to say, you know what? That's my brother right there. That's my sister right there. The Bible says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Give me that in Leviticus chapter 19. Because that is one of the biggest problems we have here in Chicago. Chicago have a very strong hatred spirit. A very strong hatred spirit. That's right. Our brothers see each other, they see opposition. They see ops. You understand? They don't see their brother, they see an op. They see a nigga. Bring it out. They see the opposite of what they is. You understand? Read what you got. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Bring it out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. What is the heart? The heart is the mind, according to the Bible. We're going to prove that. You're not even supposed to develop a thought in your mind of hating your own brother or your sister. You're not even supposed to play with that thought. Read it again. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Read it again from the top. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And that's one of the biggest problems here in Chicago. Nobody is telling these young men, my brother, pull your pants up. My brother, put the gun down. My brother, keep the God, keep God law and sexual commandments. No, my brother, stop prostituting that woman and marry that woman. My brother, stop making her your baby mother and marry that woman. You understand? Nobody's standing up. The scripture says, who's going to stand up for the Lord? Who's going to stand up and do this? I got to be honest. Our elders failed us. Our older, our older men and older women has failed this generation. But guess what? We are here, back in the earth, as prophets, to give the people life. We're here to wake up the dry bones. You understand? we back here in the earth. The time is now. From this day forward, tell your young brother, pull your pants up, put the guns down. Put the drink down. Read, read it again from the top. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Now why is that? Because do you think that these killings are just happening? Do you think brothers are picking up a gun and just bam? No. A lot of these murders are premeditated. They are they scoped out. They do their homework. You understand? So that's why the Bible says, do not hate thy brother in thy heart. So it takes a level of wickedness to say, you know what? I'm going to catch him tonight. I'm going to catch him coming out of that bit. Premeditation. You understand? Give me the book of Psalms after, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 23 and 7. Real quick. Because the Bible says, whatsoever a man thinketh in his heart, the, the mind, so is he. So if you got the mindset of a murderer, you got for this, you watching these all these wicked shows, power, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Society, uh, Boys in the Hood, what you think that's doing to your heart, your mind? Bring it out. What do you think that's doing? If you meditate on all this wicked, this wickedness, uh, evil communications. If you meditate on uh, what's, this, what's the show out um, that's here in Chicago, Empire. You know what I'm saying? All this. Watch this. The shot. There's nothing glorious about that. Nothing glorious about that. Read what you got. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 7. Uh -huh. For as he thinketh in his heart. So remember, the heart is referring to your mind. So as you think in your mind, in the heart, read. So is he. The Bible is letting you know. The majority of the thoughts that's up here, nine times out of the ten, you're going to carry those thoughts out. That's right. You're going to carry it out. If all you do is ponder on pornography, guess what? You're probably going to rape somebody. You're probably going to take it. You're probably going to commit adultery. You're probably going to fornicate. If all you do is meditate on uh, mob movies and wickedness, your mind ain't on nothing but uh, hitting the lick, sticking somebody up, shooting somebody down. Bring it out. Remember that old saying that we say on TV, our mind is a terrible thing to waste? Absolutely facts. All facts. What y'all, what we must start doing with our mind is meditating in the Bible. Meditating in the Bible. Give me that real quick in Joshua. You must put this Bible before you. How often? Every day. Every night. Because Esau, do, Esau 
Esau is the so-called white man, the Bible speaking of, first of all. They put so many images before us to take our mind on what it really should be on. For instance, commercials, social media, advertising, look at the liquor stores. But where is, why you don't see no scriptures posted nowhere? Bring it out. Because it's up to you to open this book up yourself. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You got a question, bro? Yeah. Step forward. Say it again. Come here, come closer. Why, why did the white man make everybody white in the Bible? Why did the white man make white. make everybody white in the Bible? Good question. Hold on, we're gonna do one question at a time. So, what's your name, bro? Terrence? Terrence, all right, Terrence, best Leo. Terrence's question was, why did the white man make everybody white in the Bible? Terrence, do you know what the word renaissance means? Bring it out! The word renaissance means rebirth. Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Rebirth, a rebirth. Rebirth of what? Rebirth of a nation, watch this. Because at one point, you ever heard of the Dark Ages? What is the Dark Ages? Middle Ages, but what is it? The Middle Ages, the Dark Ages was actually the time when the so-called blacks, Hispanic and Indians, Indians ruled the world. We ruled the world. Everything was black. All, all our images was black. Our images in our Bibles was black. You had images painted all throughout Rome, black. Everything was black. But to answer your question, why did the white man paint everybody as white in the Bible? Read what you got. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Huh? Keep not thy silence, O God. Huh? Hold not thy peace uh -huh. and be not still, O oh God. Uh -huh. For lo, thine enemies. Thy who? Thine enemies. Thy enemies, plural. Thy enemies did what? Make a tumult. They came together and said, you know what, we got to do something about this. It was a debate. How are we going to take these so called black, Hispanic, Native Indians down? Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And they that hate us has lifted up their head in pride. Bring it out! They lifted up their head in front. That's why every time you walk past one of them, they don't even really look you in your face. They walk past you with their head high. They may smile at you, though. They smile because they say, Got him. Read. Verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel. They did what? Taking crafty counsel. They came together and they took crafty counsel. Meaning, there was a meeting taking place amongst the other nations against the so-called blacks and Native Indians, the Israelites. They came together with crafty counsel, read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones. And have consulted against thy hidden ones. Let me ask you a question. Is there more so-called blacks, Hispanic, Native Indians locked away in prison or white? Exactly. Do you know that the prison system is all um, crafty counsel as well? Yes, it's all crafty. Paint the images of the white man in the Bible, form the prisons, School system, all crafty council. What you eat, all crafty council. What they serve you in the public school, hospital, all crafty. Read. Verse 4, they have said, come and let us cut them off. They said what? Come and let us cut them off. They gathered around and they said, listen, this is what we're going to do. Let's cut them off. From being a nation. Let's cut them off from being a nation. What nation are we? We the Israelites, but y'all don't know that because we've been cut off. We have been whitewashed, brainwashed with the white images. They said, let us come and cut them off for being a nation. So let's paint white images in their Bibles. Let's show uh, Pastor the Christ as a so-called white man. Let's show the movie Moses as a white man. You understand? Prince of Egypt as all being white. So they use, they on another level with it. They got the mind, they got the mind. Once they get their mind, the body gonna follow. Read on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They said, let us come cut them off of being a nation so that the name of Israel should be no more in remembrance. Because I can ask anybody right now randomly, what is their nationality? And I might give out 10 different answers. You understand? See? Your real nationality is Israel. Right. You are a nation of Israel. You are the real Jews the Bible speak of. Right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries, 
where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.